All right. All well, you right. know what? We could talk about the good wrestling. Can you believe I'm about to say this? We could talk about the WWE, the good stuff. <laughs> We could, but why don't we first talk about our good night's sleep? And of course, we know someone. I'm help not ready to do commercials yet. I'll tell you when I want to do a commercial. We've been going a while. Just want to point that well, out. Well, are you are, are you getting bored? No, I'm not getting bored. But we well, have friends out there who love when we talk about their fine products and let everyone well, know. Promo I code got, JCE. I got friends out there that love it when I talk about them at all, and I'm not ready to talk about them. I want to talk about SmackDown from November 17th, the, the show that won the ratings war. We know that much already. Uh, but again, the WWE is running away with this thing. It's not even close. And the reason is because even though they are boring us to fucking tears, there is nothing on this show with any grit, any passion, any goddamn emotion, any violence, any animosity. Oh, there's animosity. Well, but it's all in the locker room. But what there is on this show is there are some stars doing some things that kind of half-ass make a little sense and that people can remember afterwards. And apparently that's all it takes now because the other program is such mindless, meaningless drivel repeated over and over on fast forward at a high rate of speed that has just gone off and left anybody that's not already into the thing trying to figure it out. They're over here where shit's simple and they can eat a fucking ham and cheese sandwich on the couch while they watch it instead of taking notes to try to remember who these goddamn people are. Yeah, no one ever says, oh, another tournament? Oh, gee, <laughs> I've never heard that from a WWE fan. <laughs> Another tournament? Another battle royal? Oh, my God. So on SmackDown on the 17th, there was very little of anything happening, but what did? Built for Survivor Series. And unfortunately now, Brian, thankfully I've sworn off watching pro wrestling after oh, AEW has driven me off the edge of a cliff because... They're going to, at the Survivor Series War Games, and we mentioned, boy, they finally got four or five strong baby faces that can face uh, four or five strong heels. They got a real kind of War Games thing. Guess what they're going to have before they have the War Games? What they're going to have before the War A concert. No. They're going to have women's War Games. Well, yeah, of course. You knew that was coming, didn't you? I was hoping not. We have this I know conversation they've done it before. Every year, every year. I feel like every year for like five years straight, you and I have had this conversation. I'm sorry, but I've been in the wrestling business in and around it for 50 years. And I just naturally assumed that when you announce one fucking main event blow off match, that you're not going to have another one 45 minutes before you have that one on the same show. God damn it. That's what Dusty should have done. Misty Blue and uh, whoever she would team with versus Linda Dallas and uh, whoever else was in that little porno crew. And and uh, Cat LaRue. Cat LaRue. That was Cat LaRue. That's right. But nevertheless, that's what we're... And again, even if it was a guy's war games, you don't have dinner before you have dinner, right? You don't take a shower before you take a shower. You're going to see a war games match before you see the war games match. And it's going to be a substandard, smaller, less important, phonier looking War Games match because it's a bunch of fucking girls. And it got in the match beyond. They're building a dome of steel in Atlanta. It'll rip you from asshole to appetite. The fucking score settling of the Road Warriors and the goddamn Dr. Death Steve Williams and the Horsemen and Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff and Magnum TA and whatever the fuck. Well, not Dr. Death, but yeah. Doc was in a couple of them. But not that year, was he? He was in all, it was war games, a point I'm trying to make. Okay. These giant behemoths, these fucking badass son of a bitches that were trepidatious, at, if nothing else, to get into the most dangerous match ever created. And here comes fucking 10, 125 pound women be in it. 
first. Well, you have Bianca in it. You have Charlotte in it. Becky. I love Charlotte to death. I love Rhea Ripley. I don't want to see Rhea Ripley in the war games. It fits. If women can survive, how dangerous can it be for the men? You are diluting your goddamn money drawing gimmick. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't expect to see a bunch of goddamn guys do any uneven parallel bars in the Olympics either, which would kind of, and when they were falling on their head and flying off and breaking their leg, it would still kind of dilute the amazing performance we would get from Nadia Comaneci and Olga Corbett. So you love her to death, just not the war games. Not the war games. You don't fucking, you don't book Leonard Bernstein to head the goddamn Led Zeppelin. It's not right. So they're going to throw a bucket of cold water on the war games match with the men, the big blow off, the top talent, the company by having the girls do it an hour beforehand. And that's what we found out at the, in the opening segment after Bailey's bunch and Shotzi and Charlotte and Bianca talked for nearly 10 minutes and then got into a girl fight and the, the heels were five on three, so they dumped the baby faces to the floor and the baby faces licked their wounds and turned around and left. So, well, we'll go find some more people. Good Lord. And that's, so they're going to have a war games match and then the baby face team is two down and they're trying to find some people by the end of the fucking night. Which was a show long story, which paid off at the end. Yes, it did in a girls war games match being set up. Jesus Christ. See why I don't want to watch wrestling? Well, I saw the other reason. I mean, it can't be drinking blood and women's war games. They're two different things. Well, maybe if the women would drink the blood of the war games and the men would... What? I don't know. So then the first match on the show... And by the way, this is what won the night on Fox Network Television, by the way. The Brawling Brutes against the Street Profits against Purely Deadly in a three-team triple threat, whatever the fine, invoked the Purely Dreary Deadly rule and did not watch this, but that was, yeah. And then they had another fake girl fight in the back because Bailey's bunch was going to beat up all the other women to take away the potential teammates. And so uh, apparently the... The officials were go in the back were telling Bailey's girls, okay, don't don't beat up so and so anymore. But it's I guess it's okay if you beat up somebody else. How can you just be all right? Did you see this program? I saw things on this program, but I fast forwarded through, for instance, that three-way tag match. Oh, uh, how about Dragon Lee versus Axiom? I thought this was good, and the fans there really seemed to like it. Once again, they liked another Dragon Lee match. It looked like the goddamn Mexican minis having at each other. Mascarita Sagrada against Mini Vader. Well, his, Let me just his big opponent was Espectrito. Well, you do and you'll clean it up. Axiom. I know that's a word. Axiom. I'm looking in a dictionary now. Axiom, a self-evident or universally recognized truth, a principle that is accepted as true without proof. So that means that Axiom is a big bag of bullshit. He's a hell of a luchador. He is accepted as, as true without any proof whatsoever. <laughs> Good God. Maybe he can meet gravity and anti-gravity and they can fucking make more minis. We were at the 9 o'clock hour of SmackDown after what I've just described to you. And here came Pablo Escobar to the ring for a promo, and the people now are booing the shit out of him and won't let him talk. Not as much. He's good. Give him his real name. Santos Escobar. He's been good. I'll, I'll shorten him up to Escobar. I don't know about this. Because, again, the people are booing him because he turned on Rey Mysterio. Rey is a beloved individual. But his story of the thing is never meet your heroes. And they started whatting him. And, and he tells a story that his hero was Rey Mysterio and he patterned himself after him and patterned his career after him and Rey was like a father figure. But after last week, I realized that Dominic was right because I deserved the U.S. title. And who got it? 
I revived the LWO and who took it over? He's right. Well, but a little bit different. A little bit different. Couldn't that have been somewhat of his intention all along? Is that he knew that he at first he was going to meet and defeat Rey Mysterio to take his goddamn rightful place as the top of the luchadors. But then, remember, their, their one match was fucked up and stopped, and I think the other time Ray beat him. So he could have used that. And, and then I was almost ready to be the U.S. champion, and Ray Mysterio wins it. The same stuff. But instead of he was my hero and my idol and like a father figure to me, I was always better. I was always, I knew that Ray was breaking down and his time was coming and I should have had all this, but one way or another, he weaseled out of it. Well, finally, I got even, I don't know, whatever the fuck. I like Escobar when he speaks Spanish, it sounds like he means it. I have no idea what he's saying, but he has more conviction than when he's speaking English. But anyway, so the last straw was Ray siding with the outsider, Carlito over Escobar, and in the the good stuff he did say, he's, I hope, he didn't say, I hope you flatline on the way to the hospital, but he's a, Ray, you're in the hospital, I hope you don't make it, I hope they have to amputate your leg, <laughs> that was great, and then Zelina came out and argued with Escobar and slapped the shit out of him, it looked quite stiff, and then the rest of the LWO were there to comfort her, and they headed to the ring and argued with Escobar, and he kicked him out of the ring, said, get out of here. And when they turned to leave, he attacked them and beat both of them up. And then Carlito came out and Escobar bailed out. So now Escobar is a full-fledged heel without a country there. And the other two loser world orders are kind of fodder. And the, the issue is going to be Carlito. And again, if this is what they saved Carlito back for when they were going to sign him after the Puerto Rico thing, and then they... Well, they did sign him, but they didn't debut him. This is a good advance for thinking. But well, yeah, yeah it's all, this is all drama. There's nothing fucking going on we, we really want to see in the ring, but who's on whose side? And why are they mad at each other? We know. The way it went down doesn't make much sense, but I've liked the way Escobar has done. I like, I like his work here. Uh, the last few months I have, you have to wonder if Ray's really hurt if he's hurt worse than I thought he was, if maybe things got rushed a little bit or moved around or things didn't happen exactly how they had planned out. Well, that might be possible. But nevertheless... I that, like that's, Escobar here, but again, yeah. he's the heel. He's telling the truth. How's he the heel? What did he say that's a lie? Well, the thing is, no, but it's the way he's... I don't have much problem with that. It's the way that he has interpreted it and the way that it, you know that he's, it's the context of the thing. All along, Ray didn't mean to do those things the way they happened. It wasn't like it was something he was doing on purpose. They kept it to where, you you know, you can see where Escobar, and, and every, when a baby face turns heel, they do need to have some kind of reason or incident that's legitimate to them and then the, we heard Lance Russell say to me in times, oh, come on, you're taking it the wrong way, Tojo, or whatever. It's got to mean something to them. It's got to be obvious to them, and other people don't see it that way because it didn't really happen that way, but they take it that way. That's the bone of contention. I don't mind that. Um, uh, you know, I think Escobar and Cal Carlito, if they just get the other two somewhere else because the group got so fucking big and those guys are just flunkies anyway i think if they keep it with carlito and escobar and then ray can come back at some point they'll have something there but it's drama it's soap opera as long as they stay away from the ring and the wwe they're making a, a fucking mint speaking of staying away from the ring grayson waller beat cameron grimes what were you going to say? Nothing of importance. Well, that's normal, but I thought I'd give you the opportunity. Ah, come on. I'm just grumpy today. So then Bailey's bunch beat up Zelina in the back. And then 
we had the package from Crown Jewel with Cena against Solo, and Paul and Solo and Jimmy Uso actually were in the ring already for their promo. We didn't get the entrance. I guess they were running late for some reason. But Paul did, again, a masterful heel promo. He, I don't want to do the whole thing or try to recap it, but he was building up Solo as the reason why John Cena isn't here tonight and will never be back. And you can thank Solo, and you can thank Solo for this bad thing happening, that bad, bad thing happening. And he says goodbye to John Cena. And he said, oh, and then he made fun. He said that this is the time that the music should play and he would come out and he'd beat us all up. Well, he's not, and he's never will because of Solo. And he had really built the thing up good where you could tell he was about to go home and he was putting Solo over and the music interrupted, but it was L.A. night. And now they're sick of listening to Paul Heyman and they're ready to see L.A. night kick the shit out of him, right? And so he gets, a, and he's over. And he gets a big pop, and he comes out and cuts the promo from the entranceway. The only reason that Roman Reigns is still the champion instead of me is because of the bloodline. And now the fans are yaying him like they whatted Austin working with him. They're not whatting him or yaying him to throw him off or because they're bored or it's the thing to do. They're working fucking with him. And he's got the cadence where it works. He's smart enough. He can figure it out. And basically, he says that everybody in the bloodline is going to fucking fall until it's him and Roman. And tonight, Jimmy is first. And he called Heyman MC Boss Hog. And as soon as he gets in the ring, they go to the break. But in this case, yeah, you want to see L.A. Knight beat up Jimmy Uso? I'll sit through the fucking break. Nine months ago, he was the head of the modeling agency. You mean to tell me that there is any doubt who the booker of the year is when Triple H has turned Max Dupree into L.A. Knight and Tony Khan has turned Edge into Adam Copeland? And then we come back from the break and they ring the bell for the match and immediately Heyman gets a phone call and he and Solo leave. And this is because I think I'm pretty sure that Jimmy's best use as a heel is not quite to the level of Dominic the where they beat him up all the time and they can beat him and, you know, still fucking uh, keep heat on him. But the top guys need to beat him up most of the time. I don't see him as a dominant fucking force. And I think if Jay's going to be a world beater baby face, Jimmy may be a better chicken shit big mouth heel that gets a, a lot of comeuppance. But nevertheless, it was a WWE match. LA Knight fucking does all of his stuff and then the heel stops him uh, and gets some heat. But LA Knight got more of the, this match than most of the time, because he's L.A. Knight, and they're really pushing him. And Jimmy was in control briefly, and then L.A. came back, boom, boom, boom. And uh, at, then at that point, here's another thing with Jimmy. Did you notice he blew up a, a spot kind of early? Well, they recovered from that, but then at the point where L.A. Knight started fighting back, and started to open up his comeback. He did a DDT, and both of them were selling, and L.A. apparently had to tell Jimmy the rest of the fucking entire match. I don't know. And then, as he was making a comeback, or as L.A. was making a comeback, Jimmy was still fairly confused. But they did a complicated back and forth then, and L.A. Knight hit to finish one, two, three. Again, it's an elementary wrestling match. If you were a fan of the territories in pro wrestling days, you would think this is the most boring show ever and what the fuck is going on here. But as wrestling exists today, it is the opposite of what AEW is doing, which is everything wrong. They give you a little bit. They get you into the personalities. They're stars. And then they do a simple angle, a simple finish and a simple angle. 
and then they give you a filler for another 45 minutes. And it's working because the other shit is just caca. It's a shame there's no actual real good shit, but air on the side of safety, apparently. And then Solo came out and uh, distracted him, and, and Jimmy nailed L.A. Knight, and Solo spiked him, and they started getting heat. And then here comes Cody, and he makes a save in his suit, and they have a big fight, and the heels powder, and Cody and L.A. Knight are together in the ring, positioned perfectly. Cody's already over. L.A. Knight's just got there. Now they're firmly side by side. And it's simple and easy to understand. Yes, it is. So simple. I can't really add too much to what you just said. And uh, the only thing I'll add to the rest of this show is then at the end of the show, Charlotte and Bianca and Shotzi got in the ring and they were about to reveal whether they had a partner or not. And then Bailey's bunch came out and they had a face off and Becky Lynch jumped in. And joined them, and they had a big fucking fight. There you go. That's the whole two-hour show. And that's a big deal, because remember, everyone, their fans even know that Becky and Charlotte had issues. It played out one time live on TV. Yeah. So it's a big deal to get them together. For the fans that like WWE women's wrestling, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to the people who like that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing those people like. That's right. Well, that was SmackDown.